there, friends. It's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I think this time I might have gone a little too far. Where's Ghost Avengers? Where's Ghost Avengers? Ah! Ah! It's your pal Dave. Welcome back to the West Coast Avengers and holy shit. In the immortal words of our goddess and savior, Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. All right. Blah. I'm your host, Dave, your guy, your comic guru, your Bronze Age Bodhisattva, your, your Silver Age Samurai, whatever it is you want to call me. I bought another collection. I know it doesn't look like much, but this might be the greatest collection I ever bought. Now, before we go into that and the story and everything, Every Wednesday, my sale, West Coast Wednesday. Every Sunday, I drop a new video like the one you're watching now. And every Monday, across all podcast platforms, I drop an episode of It Came From The Newsstand with my brother, Manu. And that is that. We'll get that out of the way. I'm recording this on Thursday, October 12th. I was supposed to be at New York Comic Con this weekend. And uh, to make a long story short, I needed to take a break and just not travel and not do anything because I was burnt out. And it was a decision I didn't make lightly, but um, in hindsight, I'm glad I did. Why? Well, I got a chance to relax the last couple of days, watch some movies, read some comics, and then buy this. A little story behind how I found this collection of roughly 40 books or so. There was a posting on Facebook and on OfferUp. It was a double post. It was from earlier this week, and the guy posted some photos of ASM books and early Strange Tales, early ASM. And I had messaged him and I tried talking to the guy and the communication was even weirder. So I wrote it off. I, I, I don't really like dealing with sketchy people when it comes to buying collections, but there was a piece in the back of my mind that if this guy hit me back up, sure, I would go take a look at the books. <laughs> I was trying to get a friend to come with me because I, like I said, I got weird vibes from this and I don't often get weird vibes. You never know what somebody's going to do. I met up with him this afternoon. I looked at these books. Now, besides what you're going to see, he had a stack of Strange Tales and also an X-Men 1. The X-Men 1 wasn't for sale, or at least not yet. I'm looking at books that looks they look like they were legitimately printed yesterday and, you know, or, or sealed in a time capsule from 1960s. Some of these books you're going to see, I'm going to do a top-down view you're going to see some of the cleanest early ASM copies you'll ever see. I'll talk about this um, more as you look down from this view. But uh, all in all, I paid six and a half thousand dollars for this stuff. And I think the value of it is um, exponentially greater. There wasn't much of a negotiation. I asked him point blank what he wanted for all of it. And he said a number. And because this is a negotiation, all of life is a negotiation, I came back with a number and we met directly in the middle. And so he was happy, I was happy. You guys are going to see some real shit. So enjoy this and uh, thank you for watching. So I didn't put these in any order. They're just in the two piles as I kind of bought them. And I'm going to show you what I got. Now, I'll take some of these out so you can see how pristine these books are and clean the pages are. If you think if you think I'm going to remember every single key in here, well, you know, as much of a encyclopedia that I am, I'm still a human being. All right, so they decided to gift me this Strange Tales 131. Um, I don't even know if this is a key. I just, you know, I know how cool the cover is. There's your first banger. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number four, the first appearance of Sandman. Now we're going we're gonna to take this one out to take a look at how beautiful this one is. There's a couple little nicks on the side here. A little rip. Um, but look how beautiful the colors are. But from what I looked at when I started pulling some of these books out, like they're all white pages. Look at this. 1963. And this is a white page first appearance of the Sandman. I mean, I, I don't know how often people will grade these in white pages, but just a little bit of stress marks here and then one little tiny nick. But I could see this being... Uh, a seven five to an eight five, maybe even pushing a nine zero with those white pages. Um, so there's there's that, 
And if you're wondering why, you know, some of this stuff is a little bit more edited just because uh, I want to put these back in. I want to take my time. I don't want to rush anything. So there'll be some heavy editing. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 42. I believe that's the first full appearance of Mary Jane. Uh, the last panel of this book, I believe, is the uh, Face of Tiger. You hit the jackpot. But uh, that last panel says it all, right? Face of Tiger. You hit the jackpot. Also, another white pager. These aren't even close to off-white. <laughs> so, uh, and you're not seeing any color correction done on the screen. Um, this is all just under two panel lights right here. Second appearance of the Rhino, ASM 3043. Uh, and by the way, I don't have to even say it. These are all amazing Spider-Man books. Uh, this is the second or third appearance of Lizard. This is my favorite cover of the Lizard appearances because of the yellow. I mean, just looking at this... Without taking it out, it looks like a 9.4. You know, maybe a 9.092. I mean, this this is like a once-in-a-lifetime type of collection here. Look at how brilliant these pages are. And uh, a lot of these are going to be graded just because that's how you uh, you max out the value. First Rhino. I This is one of my favorite Romita covers because the proportion. It, it just sells the Rhino. Oh, speaking of my favorite Romita book. Another copy of 39, which is going to be my third copy this year. I'm not going to take everyone out, but you could see it's a beautiful copy. It has a color breaking crease here. It looks like maybe there was a finger bend that turned into a color break. But either way, an absolutely brilliant book. Another classic Ramita. I know I'm not going to get any 9.8s out of this, which still, I you know, I think that's a, a nice pipe dream. But, you know, this thing's a, a 9 or better in those pages. Like, that's... So there are people out there, and I'm not one of them, but there are people out there that really want their white page books. And I don't really get it when you're talking about slabbing a book and then caring about the page quality. But I think it's like a, you know, just, it's a thing. I don't even want to say it's anything. It's just a thing. Uh, ASM 8. I'm not sure what the specific key of, is here, but still, it's an ASM 8. This is not a book I've, I've ever been super familiar with. Uh, and then, you know, this has got like a, a rip up here. So it's still a really beautifully presenting copy. And once again, white pages. So, you know, you take what you can get, right? Right. <laughs> All right. Amazing Spider-Man 49. See, I can't see. It's hard for me to just say it's number 49. I have to pay my respects to the fact that it is an amazing Spider-Man book. But uh, I don't think I've ever seen or really taken in this cover. But you've got Craven and Vulture. Beating the shit out of Spidey. Second appearance of the Kingpin right there. Amazing Spider-Man 51. An absolutely stunner of a copy. I will say there's spoiler. There's no Amazing Spider-Man 1 in this collection. Whew. Look at the brightness of these pages. And I was, when I started looking through this, I'm like... I thought maybe I was looking at some like amazing uh, fraudulent, you know, fake comics, but they're not. I mean, the color breaking and, and the stuff that shows on these books is exactly what it looks like when you have a amazing Spider-Man or a Silver Age book with a sub crease. And there's, uh, I believe that's the second Scorpion, but uh, that's got a sub crease on it. So it's, it's, it is what it is. I think those generally are going to default to five O's or six O's, but not, I don't think you can get one with a sub crease that would go higher than a six O there's the molten man cover, a uh, great Steve Ditko cover and just a, a great book. First Gwen Stacy, um, with, with the sub crease, but, uh, you know, it's like my third copy of this that I've had, uh, this year. And, uh, I have one in the PC, which is the one I'm keeping and this will be for sale. Why does Harry look old? Harry looks older than his dad. Okay, well, anyway, sorry. Sorry, went off on a tangent there. Uh, then you've got the uh, other Molten Man book, ASM 35. And wow, well, this is probably the, for grade, and what it is, is the best book in the collection. And that is Amazing Spider-Man 14, the first appearance of Green Goblin. But folks, you need to see the condition of this book. I mean, sure, there's some ticks on the side. There's a little pressable defects on the back cover. There's no staining. I didn't see any rips when I first looked at it. But these are white pages. This is a first Green Goblin in a white page. 
This thing is just unbelievable. That's right, they don't reveal his identity. Um, and, and so, yes. A, a, not a flawless copy, but a damn near flawless copy. You know, once this gets pressed, I still, I think I'm looking at a 9.0 in this book. Maybe we'll say an 8 to an 8.5 to be conservative. But good God, man. Good God. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 52, 24. This is a little bit uh, beat up because it's a sub copy. That, this is a book I've never actually seen before. Now I think about it, I've never seen this cover really taking it in. Um, and then Amazing Spider-Man 27, 26, 32. Hike. This, 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 and this all have subs uh, subscription creases, which that's fine. Once again, will be a raw sale instead of a graded sale. Oh, there's so much more that you haven't seen in this pile. All right, so you've got uh, 30, which I believe is the first cat burglar, maybe. I know there's a double significance to this book. And then you've got the uh, the Spider Slayer, J. J. Jonah Jameson. Look at the colors. Like I know there's a subcrease, but the vibrant colors on this. I have three copies of this right now, and this one is by far the brightest. There's the one where Spider Spider Man. This is like the um, kind of like Ditko's best, but the one where this is uh, so many people. This is their favorite issue. Uh, the one where Spider Man kind of realizes he's got that super strength. Uh, that has been homage in movies and also other Spider-Man books. One of my favorite covers, this is actually the first Silver Age Spider-Man book I had purchased, uh, was this one. I just, it makes no sense. Like what? Okay. So if, if Spider-Man's on the side of the building and this is a vert, like, is he just jumping off the top of the building? Like trying to straddle him? That's not really a great way to hunt by jumping on top of your subject and then falling to your doom. Spider-Man 38, another classic uh, uh, Spidey pose. Just a guy named Joe. Uh, so there's a second copy of this, which is weird because it's the only one with two copies. 35. Got that classic 21 cover with the Beetle Light. I believe that's what that is. And then Amazing Spider-Man 37. Uh, I just sold two copies of this. this. And then you've got the first Shocker. He's like a, he's like a B villain for, he's a B tier villain for Spider-Man, but I always liked the Shocker because he was, they were using the Shocker a lot in the nineties. I, I want to say it was like, um, the Deadly Foes of Spider-Man used the Shocker a lot. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 23, another great Green Goblin cover. This is the first appearance of the Scorpion, Mac Gargan, Mac Gargan. And oh, well, I guess let's not bury the lead right there. An absolutely stunning, stunning copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 50, the first appearance of the Kingpin, the classic John Romita Spider-Man No More cover. If you know me and Manu have talked about this book before, uh, I would put this in the top five Spider-Man covers ever of iconicness, maybe even the top three. And I've never owned this book. This copy, as high grade as it is, this is gonna be the one I keep from the collection because I could sell through this all, but I may never see a copy like this raw again. These are white pages, like white, white pages. Are they ultra white? I don't know if that's a thing, but they are. All right, now we have now we have the second appearance of the Vulture, ASM7, and uh, Doc Ock appearance in 53. Uh, another great Vulture cover, which I own a lower grade copy of this, but I will probably take this one for myself. Second John Romita Spider-Man, ASM 40, the battle with the Green Goblin. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 44, so that is the other of the first three lizard appearances. And then we've got a 36, an 18. Uh, it's not the second Sandman, maybe that's the third? Because the second Sandman's in Strange Tales. Uh, I forget the number. Oh yeah, now we've got a first Mysterio, which now leads me to say that this is the other book that I will match up with the one on my PC and whichever one's nicer, I will keep. God, this looks like a beautiful copy. Maybe an 8.0, uh, 8.5, a 9.0. It's got a couple of light spine ticks there. Oh, geez. You never see books like this in this condition. You just don't. Especially raw, because the ones that are in this condition are already slabbed up. All right, so there's the second Dr. Octopus right there. Right there is the second Dr. Octopus, uh, 11. And then issue 10, which a classic cover. I don't remember the significance of it other than classic Ditko. 
but I'm sure it has some key significance. Oh yeah, this was the book that I originally messaged him about that made me want to look at this collection and possibly buy it because out of all these books, you see them, right? And and you, there's something about Amazing Spider-Man 5, which is the first meeting of Doctor Doom and Spider-Man. I feel like this is like a big book for multiple crossover fans, you know, Spider-Man and Fantastic Four and Doom fans, but you don't see this book in high grade that often. And I'm not sure what it is specifically about this book, but this was the book that I, I messaged him about. I originally wanted to just buy this book because I was like, all right, if this guy's trying to charge, you know, $40,000 or something for all these books, like maybe I can at least get this for like five or 600 and it'll come back a high grade. And there you go. I'll, I'll make a, a pretty chunk of change out of it. But man, this is such a beautiful condition copy of this book. And once again, white pages, amazing Spider-Man five. Uh, we got 54, but then the last issue, I got to go out with at least an electric bang. And what way to go out with an electric bang than the first appearance of Electro. Amazing Spider-Man 9. Whoo! Look at this thing. Look at it! Uh, another one, just absolutely beautiful condition. You know, never going to be like a 9-8, but it is a white pager. Back cover looks absolutely immaculate. There's a little bit of spots of something here that... Uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's an eight, eight, five, but who cares? Who cares? Um, this is just, I, I can't believe this. And all of this comes to light 24 hours after I canceled my trip to New York. One didn't have to do with the other. I didn't cancel my trip because I thought I was going to get this collection. I canceled my trip because I'm just experiencing some heavy burnout. And my reward was this guy finally just being like, okay, we can meet up. Let me know when. So, I can't believe this. Like, obviously, some of this stuff will go to grading, but a lot of this stuff will be available in the next coming weeks. I still have a lot of stuff left from that previous collection. Um, so, if you are looking for Amazing Spider-Man books, I think tuning into West Coast Wednesday of the next couple of weeks is probably a good idea. But I, I want to say um, thank you to the universe but this is this is how I operate. I put myself in these positions to try and take cracks at stuff like this and get this stuff. And, uh, you know, patience pays off. Being polite to people pays off. I don't know. This is amazing. I fucking love this. I love doing this. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you. I'm still in shock of what I got here. Obviously, some of this stuff will have to go to CGC because that's just how this works. But a lot of the stuff with the sub creases is going to be sold raw during West Coast Wednesday in the next couple of weeks. And uh, I, I still like making the decision to stay at home was independent of this. And knowing that because I ended up, you know, kind of listening to my body and my brain and, and pumping the brakes on my trip, you know, I was re rewarded. Anyway, this is why I do this stuff. I, I love seeing these books and I love being able to get these books. And obviously I pass them on to other people and I keep some, but it's still amazing to see the condition of these books for how old they are. And it's all amazing Spider-Man. So it's great anyway. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. I've got more videos coming. Uh, so every Sunday you'll see one. Every Monday's the podcast and every Wednesday's the sale. Thank you very much. And uh <laughs> I'll see your Spider-Man. Oops, I, I did it again. again. <laughs> We're testing, we're testing, we're verbally molesting Spider-Man, Spider-Man, he's our guy. 